Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back. Well, I'm in California, so I'm not back anywhere. So I obviously came to the States to go to CES. It's the first time I've ever left the UK. Pretty big step for me, totally mind blowing. But while I was at um, CES, it made a lot of sense for me to hop on a plane, which was literally just like an hour and um, 30 minutes away, head to California so I can finally have a look around the Corsair offices. We are filming outside so you can hear the lovely American cars going on. In fact, I got to go out on an epic Mustang earlier. I was well happy. But anyway, I digress. So what I want to do is I actually want to give you a very rare insight into what goes on in the Corsair offices. There is some stuff that I'm not technically meant to show you, so keep your eyes peeled in the background and you may spot some stuff. I may also point certain stuff out for you as well. I'm going to show you a quick glimpse of Project Slate and I have to be very careful about the way that I uh, name that case at the moment. Uh, I'm also going to show you some really cool technical testing stuff as well. Just the type of stuff that you never see but it might be kind of uh, interesting for those enthusiasts out there like me that are into, into this stuff. But let's come in and have a look. So the first port of call, they've actually got a mock-up shop. Now, it's heavily, heavily Corsair branded, which is, do you know what I mean? It's gonna make a lot of sense, but this could be the type of thing that you might see uh, smaller sections in OC UK in the UK or scan for argument's sake. But also this is kind of the thing that they're showing on their booths at the big shows now, like Dreamhack and EGX and that sort of stuff. There's lots of cases and power supplies. This is quite a safe area for Corsair at the moment because they've not updated it with any of the new, new, super new stuff. But for those of you out there that are really into your branding, they've actually got coats and um, fleeces and caps. Do you know what I mean? How many of it? Look, you can't even get these caps, but you, they've got caps. There's loads of cool stuff that those, I know it might be kind of limited, but it's the sort of thing that us brand whores love. Let's face it, how many of you have got uh, like specific t-shirts from your streamers and stuff like that? But anyway, loads of cool stuff like that here. Let's move on. Okay, so I've got a magic pass, which means I can pretty much go anywhere. Now this is either gonna be the best thing that they've done today or the worst thing that they've done today. But come on, let's have a look. This is the stuff that you don't normally get to see. into the offices and there's, there's literally boxes and kit and hardware all over the place. But for me, Harry, hidden in the corner, he's a fellow Brit, he got lost, he never got the plane home. I don't think they decided they wanted to let him home again. And then we've got Rob in the corner. Rob, he's actually done a runner, but amazingly, he does all the artwork. Look, you can see all the designs up the top here. Also, he's a total car nut as well. So I ended up in here for about an hour earlier and got told off. Anyway, we can run up here. Right, okay, so there is loads of stuff on the walls. I've loved loads and loads of the pictures, but I don't know about you guys, there has been an absolute massive influx in memes. How many of you out there are literally just on your phone, on Discord or Reddit, looking at memes all the time? Well, amazingly, there's a thing called a memeologist and they've actually managed to make a career out of making memes. I mean, look. And I'm not even joking, that sign has not been made. And they make memes for a living. You enjoying Reddit? Anyway, they're best left in there. When we come up this end, something that I personally didn't realise was the Corsair comics. I thought that they were being done by just some publishing company or they'd hired, do you know what I mean, an agency to get it done and there would have been a team of people getting doing it but it's actually done by one guy and he probably has the most immense booth in the entire offices. Give us a wave. You can see all the stuff that he's done recently. So all of these, you would have seen them all over their Facebook and all over their advertising. He does every single one of them and they're epic. Okie dokie. Right, so we're into the tech support section. I am trying to show you as many different things as I possibly can do. And really there's not a great deal I can say about it, but it's one of those ones where you do just have to look at all the stuff that is on display, that they're testing, that they're playing around with. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's lots of you out there that would think this was like the most amazing job in the world. Because 
they just get to mess around with kit all day. I mean, I know I kind of do as well, but look at it. There's stuff everywhere. Look, H110i GT that they're just messing around with. I'd love to know what that's got to do with their testing, but never mind. 1070s, just there's kit everywhere. Okay, so I did say I talked to you about Project Slate, but I've actually been buttoned and I'm not allowed to talk about it too much at all. Although there are a few laying around and that's not my fault. Anyway, so lots of big offices and office blocks and companies now end up having their own gyms or like social areas where the staff can come and let off a bit of steam, do you know what I mean? Work out in their lunchtime, helps keep morale up. Corsair are no different. Although, one of the things I will say is the Corsair staff are a bit different. So they've got all the gym stuff, they've got everything kind of laying around, but someone bought them Nerf guns and chairs. And this is what ends up happening. Oh no! And <laughs> retaliate! <laughs> Okie dokie. So obviously Corsair are quite well known for their power supplies. Something that you don't probably realise is though, when they say that they're rated at 50 degrees C to operate at their rated um, wattage and all the specs at 50 C, they do all the testing in-house. So the machine behind me, basically you've got a power supply load uh, tester on the side, which is a massive like $50,000 chroma. It's worth an immense amount of money. It could even be worth more. But the box to the left is actually an oven. So there's a power supply in there being run at its um, absolute maximum output at 50 degrees. And they just, they keep tweaking and testing. And it, essentially it's like the sort of stuff that I do, but done properly by people that actually know 100% about what they're talking about. Okay. So we've got another oven here, but amazingly, this is to test out the AIOs that Corsair sell. Now they've got this really cool bit of kit here that I want to show you. Now this may look like a funny motherboard with a processor in it, but that, that's not a working processor whatsoever. But this is a 2011 um, socket, 2011 three, it doesn't really matter. Now the, the CPU is just a dummy, it's a heat generator. Now what they can actually do is they can put specific amounts of load into the CPU so that then when they bolt one of the AIOs to the top of it, when you've got the right bracket on there, there we go. So when they bolt the CPU to the top of it, they can actually put 100 watt load, 150, 200, they put whatever load they want on it um, at all. But the other thing is because it's in a thermally controlled cabinet and oven, for want of a better term, they can have specific, specific ambient temperatures. So when I test at home, for example, and I start testing at you know 20 degrees, after a day or so, you might get a 0.5 degrees variable just because my air conditioning might not be quick enough to keep up. Now for my type of testing, that's absolutely fine. That's a, that's a tolerance that we can put up with. But with this, they can keep it absolutely exact. And like I said, dial in the exact amount of wattage. So when they say about the TDP, if they say it's um, uh, accurate, up, or they can call up to 250 watts, this is how they know it can call up to 250 watts. And it's also how they can put a consistent, consistent load on it as well. So as with my benchmarks like OCCT, and Blender, Blender obviously doesn't run forever. OCCT, the load goes up and down as well. So with this, they can have the exact amount of uh, wattage being pumped through it, the amount of heat coming out of it that they want for however they want, and also control all the ambient temperatures as well. Okay, so something else that they test a lot of in-house is fans. Now, you may think to yourself, testing a fan, that's really easy, bolt it to a radiator, see what the temperatures are. Well, not quite. So when you see on the boxes, of the fans, they have all the specs and stuff about what's going on with the fans. Well, they don't just make those numbers up. They don't get told those numbers. They work them out themselves. And they've got this massive machine which does uh, all of the testing for them. It's pretty much all automated as well. But the other really cool thing about this is, is it gets um, all of the results and everything get calibrated once a year and it's actually available online. So you can go and see the last time it was calibrated and all of the results are backed up as well. So it's not just something that they're, you know, it's not just a machine that they're running. It's literally, they have people come in and it's all listed online. What are you smiling for, cameraman? Smiling, it makes me think I've done something wrong. 
Anyway, so long and short of it is, there's a fan bolted here on this side and they can put whatever fan they want on it. You've got a couple of different sensors going down here and a load of valves in the middle. Bearing in mind, I've only just been told this myself. But this is the sensor that they run to uh, pick up the static pressure. So this is the, 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 the number that we'll get from this is what people want to know for radiators. Then the flow is registered between these two and between the two valves. But this is the graph that it spits out. So they literally set it all up, click a button, and then 45 minutes later, you get all these massive graphs. And I'm pretty sure if I, oh no, it's not this one. They've got another one. They've got another graph where it gives you all of the numbers in like a spreadsheet and everything as well. But in case I've got it wrong, they did show me that there's a thing on the wall which shows you exactly how it works. Okay, so this is one of the really geeky rooms where we're going to kind of have to look around at all sorts of stuff that's going on in the background. There's people working in here, so we're just going to have to put up with it. But one of my favourite cases that Corsair have ever made was the 600T. This is actually one of the original sketches and uh, mock-up designs for the 600T from way back in the day. And I kid you not, if I couldn't get this in my, um, uh, if I could get that in my case, I'd be taking it home with me. Case over here, I know loads of you have been asking about it, is the 500D. Now, I do happen to know that when I get back into the UK, I have one of these <clears throat> on my doorstep waiting for me to review it. But they've got one built up here with um, some custom pasta water cooling in it. So I thought I'd give you a quick sneaky look before we get home and do the uh, main review. And quickly before he goes, oh, he's going to make a run for it. Look at this. Look, there's literally kit everywhere. Just a random rack of loads of H150s. This is something that I personally love, though. I can't remember that the name that they give for it. I think it was Project Curve or something, wasn't it? So, yeah, Project Curve. So it's a 780T, but, I mean, look at it. It's carbon fibre. There's um, curved uh, tempered glass panels on the front. We've got really nice curved tempered glass panels on the side, the top's tempered glass. But the most important thing with this is the actual main frame all the way around the outside is proper aerocraft grade pre-preg carbon fiber. This was not a cheap case to produce. We're talking like tens of thousands of dollars to make this one case. And if I'm totally honest, if the orange bits were red or white, I'd probably want to take this home as well. Other than that, around the room, there's uh, fans everywhere. So this is just the area that they come to, grab the amount of fans that they need, go to do the build. So they've got loads and loads of stock, AIOs all over the place. This, I don't know whose area this is, but I think he needs to tidy up. Um, I'll just, yeah, you know what they say about messy space, messy mind? I don't know. Anyway, so we've got 1080 Ti's and 1080 uh, water-cooled cards at the top, the AIO water-cooled ones. And then there's literally just hardware everywhere. Look, look, there's flipping racks of CPUs for the testing and the builds that they've been doing. I always, I always need screws. I'm going to take these home with me. You can just stop that now. Okay, so I've said about the cool pictures that are all over the place. This is actually Project Catalyst, which BNEG from the UK done. They've got a picture of it here. I'll be able to show you the real thing in a second, though. Loads of cool pictures, LN2, RAM. This one at the end I specifically like. Really nice arty-farty shot on the end. But then it all starts to get a bit nuts because they've got an area which I think most of you are going to cream about. The, if you imagine that you've, you have like the ultimate, and I do mean the ultimate battle station or gaming room, They've kind of built one for themselves. So we can go through the TARDIS door into, well, it's a galaxy, I would suppose, holding the door open for the uh, cameraman. Apparently, the uh, men's and the boys are actually um, uh, aliens, though. So you can see alien for the boys. Have a look at the alien for the girl there. OK, so next area. You need a magic key to get in, and I can never remember which one I need, but there we go. So, this is where it gets a bit special. This is where it gets a little bit nuts. So, welcome to the Corsair gaming area. I'm hoping the microphone thing is still moving because we've been filming for quite a long time. So, I'm going to start in the middle. So, we've got 12 gaming systems 
in the middle, all with 4K monitors. They're kitted out from what I can see with uh, ROG Strix graphics cards. And the motherboards that are in them are all Z170 based stuff. So it's not, they're not like Coffee Lake, but at the end of the day, there's 12 systems in the middle. Now, the 12 systems, they can play head to head. The other thing that they can do is around the room, you can see that there are massive 65 inch screens. So we've got two on this side, there's one down there, there's one over here, the cameraman's gonna hate me, one here and one behind the bar. Now what we can do with the, um, the screens is you can take any single one of these systems and you can pop them up onto one of the TVs. So if there's a match going on here with this guy and that guy, we can bounce it up onto the screens. You can literally choose whatever you want. There's um, 26 speakers in the ceilings and the, you can also control that with this as well. So we can turn music on if it's still playing and it's not, it's still muted. Oh, there we go. So you can have music on. I'm gonna mute it so YouTube doesn't get all funny with me though. But the other thing that you're probably starting to notice is Corsair has their own bar. I mean, for the love of God, you can come, play games, have beers with your friends. It's immense. Now, admittedly, it's invite only, but if you were to get invited here, they've certainly got the scenery right. So I did say to you about the scenery. So we've got mods scattered around all over the place. I mean, if you come and have a look at this, it's immense. It's so simple. The lines are so clean. I just, this I really, really like. But it's not the only one that we've got here. They are all over the place. But the other thing, we've got one over here. We're going to walk around the room. Come on, cameraman, get your bum wiggling. We've got a um, Rocket League one here. This is another one that I really, really like. Super clean, super simple. Vertical mount graphics card. Uh, we've got nickel plated or chromed, however way it is, uh, pipes that are bent and they're all nice. This is the control station. This is actually pretty cool as well. So this is like a complete deck. They can control what's going on with the screens if they want, where they want them to. You've got an audio desk there as well. And then when it's all on, there's loads of um, technical like stuff that I don't understand. This is the rig that I wanted to show you though. This is the Mirror's Edge rig that Beaneg did, God, a long time ago. I didn't think I'd ever get a chance to see it. So Beaneg, they're still using it and that's quite cool. But the other thing that we've not really spoken about is the um, black lights or the UV and then the artwork around the room. And they did tell me that there was a massive argument about the characters that they wanted to use in the room. Now, I did get told once which every single one of these was. And I'm going to admit, the only one I can remember is the Corsair plane, because there is a Corsair plane. So as I go around the room, I want to see in the comments the names of the characters and then I'll give you a shout out in another video. I'm pretty sure that's Duke Nukem. That's probably one that I do know. I think this was one of the battlefield ones. This little guy down here is pretty cool. Without tripping over. I mean, look at the size of this stuff. But also with the black light as well. You've got the Corsair plane just over there. And I'm gonna run around. The girl over here with the blue hair looks epic. They hired an artist to come in and apparently it took them, it was either three or four weeks. And they were in every evening because where they were doing it with, they were graffiti artists, where they were doing it with rattle cans, they couldn't have all the fumes around during the day, so they were having to work at night to do it. You can see more stuff up here. But at the end of the day, it's an epic, epic gaming room. Now, I've been really lucky to see this. I'm actually sad that I'm not gonna get a chance to um, spend any amount of time with the staff and have a party and stuff. But if you ever do get the chance to, I don't know, maybe an enter a competition or get a chance to get, your, uh, to get in here, it's well worth the effort. Now, I've obviously given you a very quick uh, go around the Corsair offices. There was much more I could have shown you. We had to kind of condense it because let's face it, I talk a lot. So I've hoped you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. It's also the first time I've had a cameraman. It's also the first time the cameraman has been a cameraman. So thank you, Pascal. I think you've done quite a good job. Let's all say thank you to Pascal in the comments as well. It's also going to be a bit of a test to see how many of you got to the end. But for now at least, this has been Tiny Tom Logan at Corsair HQ in California. Out.